emergency earlier this week, the distress call coming from the charter fishing vessel Legend, where according to the report, a 79-year-old man aboard the ship lost consciousness and fell potentially from a heart attack. Hey guys, welcome back. Steve had a pretty eventful last trip. We had a guy airlifted off for medical reasons and it even made the news. So we're going to get into it on this video. So why don't you tell us what happened? We were out on a day and a half fishing trip and uh, we got into some bluefin, um, like 40 to 60 pound fish. And we were hooking on lighter line. They were putting up some really good fights. Um, and this angler in particular was able to get a couple bites. Uh, he was able to land one fish after a long fight. And he hooked into another. He got it all the way up to color. Uh, it happened to break him off right at color. Actually, I think it spit the hook. Um, and then uh, after that, we, we caught a few more fish and we got back on the move. And at this point, um, one of my deckhands came running up to the wheelhouse and they let me know that that angler had fainted on deck and fell down. Now, is he, you know, kind of standing at the rail? Was he like injured on the fall or sort of what was the situation? Yeah, so we were moving at the time, looking for a new school, uh, trying to relocate some more tuna. And uh, he was sitting out on deck in the sun there in a chair, and he, he just fainted. He fell over. Um, and so when this was brought to my attention, like I said, we were moving, looking for a new school. Um, so I pulled the boat out of gear. I got on the PA system to let all the passengers know why we were stopping, that we had a medical situation um, so that they wouldn't try to scurry to the rail to try to fish. And uh, I went back there and I was uh, able to evaluate him and uh, try to assess the situation. So, you know, I would assume, you know, you kind of ask the general questions, right? Like name, birthday, uh, you know, who's the president, right? <laughs> yeah, we want to make sure that, that he's aware, that he knows who he is, where he is, all that stuff. Um, and upon talking to him, he was, uh, he was able to tell me his name and who he was. And so I went a little bit deeper with the questions and I asked him uh, his date of birth, if he was on any medication at all, if he had any medical history of heart problems or anything like that, that we should be aware of. Um, and as I'm doing that, I'm just kind of assessing him, assessing his breathing uh, because he did fall off the chair, even though it was a very small fall. I'm making sure that he didn't hit his head and have any kind of uh, bleeding up there, that he might not have a concussion, anything like that. So uh, I'm just kind of assessing him in the situation. I'm trying to soak up everything that happened and uh, go from there. And so whenever something like this happens, you know, what's kind of the, the determination that you have to make, whether you get Coast Guard involved or not? Well, at first, I'm trying to make sure that he didn't, you know, just doze off and, and stumble off, you know, something innocent like that. And uh, the the guy in question here is an 80 year old man who uh, it didn't seem like he just fell asleep. It uh, it was a faint, like we said. And so once we determined that he was uh, aware of where he was and all that stuff, we uh, we assisted him up and we got him in the galley uh, out of the sun where it was cool and we could talk to him. And uh, from that point, I'm just taking more information. We, uh, we took a pulse. Uh, we had a blood pressure monitor, so we took that for him and uh, checked all that stuff. Um, I'm checking to see if his eyes are responsive, um, changes in breathing, anything like that. His skin condition. He actually had um, cold, clammy skin. He had a cold sweat going. So I'm taking down all this information, and uh, as soon as I get all the bearings from him, I walk up to the pilot house and I'm going to call United States Coast Guard Sector San Diego and start relaying to them uh, the situation that we have. And obviously, uh, you know, they deemed it uh, serious enough to meet you and get this guy airlifted and seek more medical attention back in San Diego. And I notice here that, um, you know, the, the you're still moving, right? The boat is still moving as the chopper is coming to meet you guys. So tell me a little bit about what you do to get the boat ready, what you do when they say, you know, yes, we need to get that passenger off the boat. Yeah. So at the point where uh, Coast Guard decided that uh, he needed to seek higher medical evaluation than what we could provide on the boat, uh, we start making best speed on a course towards San Diego, where this helicopter is going to be coming out of. I let them know my GPS position. I let them know my speed and bearing. And uh, what we have to do at that point is we have to start preparing the vessel 
um, as you can see, the the pastor holding the camera for us um, is struggling because water is being thrown up. You can see there was a little bit of debris that got blown up. When this helicopter comes and it's over the boat, it's going to be putting out hurricane force winds. So you can see the tackle racks on either side right there are completely empty. What we had our passengers do is grab all their tackle bags and put them inside the bunk room for this point. Uh, you can see the gaffs are missing. There's no trollers, no rods back there. There's no scoops. Um, we take everything and we have to secure it. Everything from the roof has to, has to be secured because when this helicopter comes in, um, that hurricane force winds can blow things and that be, can become really unsafe. So we have to make sure that it is a very safe situation once it comes in. And man, what a coordinated dance, right? Between the boat moving and the chopper moving forward too. Um, it's interesting that the boat's still moving. Yeah, I'm maintaining course and speed. And it's just going to be easier for the uh, the helicopter operator um, to track the boat as it's moving. You, we're at sea. You're never still no matter what, right? There's going to be conditions with the swell, uh, wind, drift, all those factors. So what they want us to do is uh, just maintain that same course and speed. And they're going to go sideways, like you can see, to put the diver um, and lower him into the boat um, and lift the passenger while the boat is moving the entire time. And uh, he obviously just got brought out and they're putting him in the little carriage thing to uh, airlift him off the boat. So how is he doing at this time? Uh, after being evaluated by Coast Guard there, um, you can see that he was obviously well enough to be transported. They're making sure of that, that uh, it isn't a situation where they can't lift him up. And um, he was doing pretty well. The, the crew assisted him to walk back there. They're getting absolutely drenched. Um, they were completely soaked by the end of this process with all the water that's being thrown up by the Hilo uh, with those hurricane force winds. And uh, they get him in the basket and they get him lifted up onto the Hilo. And uh, they're going to reset again to get the, uh, the Coast Guard guy up and on there before they take off towards uh, the hospital where they're airlifting him to. Yeah, you can see just, you know, the water on the camera, right? It gets hard to really see what's going on because of all the spray and just the force of everything that's going on. I mean, it's quite an experience, uh, I'm sure, to, you know, go through a maneuver. And thankfully, you know, this wasn't, um, you know, a life or death situation, it seems like. It's kind of best case scenario, but um, pretty cool to experience this given the circumstances. Yeah, they uh, they decided that uh, he needed to be flown in, and that's completely up to them. That's outside of my uh, control once they decide that. And uh, it just it's amazing watching these guys operate. They're so incredible at their jobs, uh, protecting all you guys out the ocean so that you can go fishing. And uh, you have that in the back of your mind that if something were to ever happen, uh, these incredible guys that are operating these helicopters and coming down and rescuing us, communicating on the radio, all that stuff. They're there to protect you and uh, make sure that you can go fishing and rest assured that your family can feel safe about it in case there ever is a, a more elevated emergency. In this case, uh, the passenger actually has made a full recovery. Uh, he went in and he was 100% medically cleared. And they said he was in as good or better of health than could be expected of any man his age. And uh, we're looking forward to having him out on the boat again. And because his trip got cut short by this medical scare, um, we gave him another free day and a half. And his fish that we caught, we were able to, uh, to get prepared for him to bring home. So we saw him this morning before recording the video. And uh, we're excited to have him back out fishing again uh, when he's ready to get back out with us. Nice. Well, I feel like that's, you know, a pretty positive ending to what was probably a pretty scary event. And um, you can see that the choppers coming back now for their own guy, um, like you said, after probably getting that guy um, settled, stable and uh, situated in the helicopter so they can just speed on towards home. Yeah, exactly. And uh, once again, everybody's situated, they get him up safely. And uh, they get on their way and we were able to turn back around and continue fishing uh, where we were able to get into a really good afternoon bite uh, that went all the way into the dark. And um, even though we were all worried about um, the passenger, we had the live flight home. Um, we were able to finish the trip on a good high note and uh, we were able to communicate with them afterwards to find out that everything was OK. And uh, everybody came away feeling really good about the situation. Man, it's such a cool shot, you know, like when do you ever really get to see this kind of 
situation or this sort of maneuver. So, and there they go right there. <laughs> yeah. Talk about adrenaline. Um, that, that just has to be a huge rush. And then they, there they go speeding off full speed, uh, taking him in.